Item number SCP-205 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-205-1 and SCP-205-2 are contained within Chamber 52 at Site-23, under regular observation via the adjoining observation room. SCP-205-1 and SCP-205-2 are to be supplied with power and face the white projection screen on the wall opposite the observation window at all times. Chamber 52 requires monthly maintenance to ensure the continued operation of both SCP objects, their power supply, and remote activation controls. Replacement parts and bulbs are kept on hand in the chamber. Maintenance is suspended during the final month of the SCP-205 cycle, occurring in April and October of each year. Should power to the Chamber 52 fail, it is to remain dark and sealed for a period of 30 days before local security enters to re-engage power for continued observation and containment. During maintenance, it is critical that only one of the SCP-205 pairs ever turned off at a time. Should both objects lose power or otherwise cease normal operation, the chamber must be sealed for a 30-day period before local security may enter to re-engage power and retrieve the remains of any personnel lost in the chamber. Pending O5 review, testing and observation is to continue before SCP-205 is to be moved to permanent storage. Description: SCP-205 is a pair of flood lamps used in photography. The light emitted by each lamp behaves in a manner unique to SCP-205 and passes completely through any surface that is not colored white. Once the light contacts a white surface, it scatters and reflects as normal and loses any unnatural properties. If the light continues uninterrupted through any matter, otherwise casting no shadow, each lamp will display an unidentified young woman's shadow upon any flat white surface, such as the projection screen in Chamber 52. Whether or not this shadow corresponds to anyone living or dead is yet to be determined, although the shadow appears to reenact a specific series of events leading up to the woman's death. Even if the lamps are slightly moved, the shadow remains distinct and does not lose focus or move along with the one lamp or the other. Only one shadow is cast, although a physical person standing before two lamps would actually cast two shadows. When supplied with steady power and maintained, the SCP-205 pair will go through a six-month cycle that ends on April 30th and October 31st of each year. Neither the inclusion of an extra day during a leap year nor intimate operation failures changes these dates. Thus, SCP-205 cycle appears to be tied to the standard calendar rather than a set passage of time. SCP-205 will shut off at midnight on the final day of each cycle. Any persons entering or already inside Chamber 52 when the lamps are both turned off are violently assaulted by forces unseen in a manner consistent with the fate suffered by the Shadow Woman, regardless of any other light sources in the room. If the lamps are shut off at the end of a standard six-month cycle, they can be remotely activated to immediately end the danger and begin a new cycle. If the lamps cease operating for any other reason, Chamber 52 will remain dangerous and must remain sealed for at least 30 days regardless of the status of SCP-205 itself. During a dangerous phase, any equipment in the room is often ransacked, but although SCP-205 itself has sometimes been moved, the lamps are never damaged. On two occasions, were carved into the walls. This strongly implies that Displaying an awareness of current containment procedures. Overview of SCP-205 cycle. For the first month of operation, SCP-205 will display a still image of one woman in a provocative pose. Although variances have been noted in the pose and clothing of the woman, the individual displayed appears to be distinct and consistent through all cycles. During the last week of the first month, the shadow will begin to move slightly as if the individual is shifting her weight or becoming uncomfortable. Her hair and clothing will be observed to flutter in ways that do not correspond to any movement of the atmosphere within Chamber 52. By the end of the first calendar month, the shadow will break her pose and spend the next eight hours moving through a series of poses that imply a photography session complete with clothing changes and short breaks, sometimes including a meal. After this session is over, the shadow will consistently be in motion for the next five months, displaying a pantomime of the last days of a young model's life before she is brutally murdered at the end of the cycle. The shadow of the woman never moves beyond the boundaries of the projection screen. The shadows of objects that the woman appears to be interacting with do not appear unless they are being picked up or carried, 
and with the exception of the final month of the cycle, any other individuals that the shadow appears to be interacting with are not seen. Although the cycle is slightly different each time, certain consistencies are observed. The individual portrayed appears to have taken up photography as a hobby, in addition to being a fashion model. Her behavior implies a great deal of social interaction, although with a lack of intimacy and behavior that indicates living alone rather than with family or a partner. One implied sexual encounter with an unseen partner occurs in the second or third month of the cycle, and exactly 66 explicit sexual encounters occur in the final month of the cycle. During the last cycle of the month in April and October, shadows distinct from the young woman are displayed. These shadows all have exaggerated nude male physiques and horns projecting from the cranium, although no phallus is ever observed, even during the sexual displays that take up the final days of the cycle. Only one shadow appears at first, interacting with the woman in a manner suggesting that they have met at a party or social gathering. The woman does not appear to notice the unusual nature of the other shadow and plays out a series of varying romantic interactions with it. The horned shadow will return to dine with the woman, engage in silent conversations and accompany her on outings. One recurring event involves the horned shadow introducing the woman to at least two other identical horned figures. After the second week of the month, the woman will take photographs of one or more of the horned shadows during one of their outings, always with a non-digital camera that has been consistent through all observed viewings of the SCP-205 cycle. After this event, explicit sexual encounters will begin between the woman and one of the figures, increasing in intensity and frequency until the end of the third week. During the final week of the month, the woman appears to develop the film in her camera for the first time since photographing the horned shadows. Her reaction to the photographs is one of shock and horror, and her movements afterwards suggest that she attempts to flee and seek shelter behind a locked door, presumably in her home. There she is encountered by multiple instances of the horned shadow figure, which assault her repeatedly for the remainder of the week. It is strongly implied that she is killed during the process, although the assaults will continue until the end of the cycle. On the last day of the cycle, one of the horned shadows begin to grow larger in a manner suggesting that the figure casting it is approaching the SCP-205 lamps directly. It will eventually overcast all other shadows, and at this time both lamps will be physically turned off, regardless of any modifications made to prevent a halt in operation. Addendum: SCP-205-1 has been the Foundation's possession since… SCP-205-2 is identical in every way, including the serial number. It was discovered in a ransacked motel room in on No sign of the identity or whereabouts of the occupants have been found, although a camera similar to the one displayed in the sixth month of the SCP-205 cycle was also recovered. Most of the contained film was ruined by exposure. See attached photo for the one image that was developed from the camera. Incident 205-76-B On October 28th, SCP-205-2's bulb burnt out. Researcher M was sent in the Chamber 52 to replace the bulb during one of the climatic assaults. Upon the opening of Chamber 52's door, all horned shadow figures within view ceased their activity and turned towards the door. Researcher resealed the chamber and refused to enter to perform maintenance. Shadow figures did not resume their usual activity for approximately three hours. Incident 205-77A On April 28, SCP-205-2's bulb exploded. Shadow figures all ceased activity and looked towards the chamber door. No staff were dispatched to replace the bulb. Chamber 52 resealed and abandoned for 30 days according to procedure.